Welcome to this hair transplant progress update video. My name is Richard and I'm currently on week 35 after my hair transplant, which I had um, back in October 2019 in Turkey, Istanbul. So we're currently entering month eight. So I thought we'll start this video by taking a quick look back and seeing um, kind of the progress that I went through from day one up until month eight right now. So things have been going pretty good this week. I've done a number of things. As you can see, I've cut my hair and I posted a video of that um, beginning of this week. So if you haven't seen it, go back and have a look. Um, I've kindly, I finally got rid of all the fluffy stuff that I had on top of my hair. And to be honest with you, I don't know if it's just a visual thing, but overall, I feel that since I cut my hair, it just feels more natural and, and maybe a little bit denser, a little bit better. Um, looks a little bit thicker. I, again, maybe, maybe it's just a visual thing, but it looks looks good and I feel good about having it a lot shorter than it was before. I don't feel like it's this hair transplant hair on top of my head anymore, if that makes any sense. It looks, if you see, it looks a lot more, um, at least to me, it looks a lot more natural and feels a lot better. So things have been going really good this week. I also tried this um, hair fiber product um, and again, I made a video of that earlier this week. If you haven't seen it, go back and have a look. Um, and just, just, it was just kind of to give you a view of what things would look like if I did use um, these kind of weird makeup products. Um, but yeah, uh, month eight, exciting stuff. We will see if, um, you know, more results happen in month eight, as they say, uh, or whether it's a load of crap and it stays the same, but we'll see, you know. Uh, even if it does stay, stay the same, don't get me wrong, I'm not being negative. I think my results so far are pretty good. I'm really happy with what I've got. Um, <laughs> it is way better if we you know, compare it against what it was like before I had the transplant surgery to what it is now. You know, I cannot believe the results. They are fantastic. Um, but yeah, we'll see if, as they say, you know, month eight to month, month eight to month 10, again, you'll get some major results. So we'll see if that really happens for me or not. We know that you know, all these results and milestones are different from person to person. If you watch my videos from beginning, you'll see that like, you know, as they said, month three and month four is kind of where it all starts happening. I think for me, it was really towards the end of month three. And then it was like month four and month five where I had the most growth, at least most visibly and most noticeably to myself. And then like month six, seven, it seemed like it had slowed down, but as you saw, like, it wasn't really slowing down. It's just that the results were not as visual. You know, it was, my hair was like thickening up and densing up and, and growing in length, but it wasn't as easy to see as like when I had no hair at all and suddenly hairs were growing, right? That makes sense. So we'll see if, you know, again, this month eight to month 10 brings us more results and we can visually see some new changes. So before I start babbling on about stuff, let me give you a 360 so you can see what my hair looks like 360 on month eight. Cool, let's take a look. And of course the 360 would not be complete without a view from the top. So that is what it all looks like at beginning of month eight. So let's see if, you know, end of month eight, end of month nine, whether we have any differences in what it looks like. But as you can see, like the donor area, you cannot see that anything's being taken from there. It all looks healthy, uh, all looks natural. There's no redness, there's no scarring. There's pretty much nothing, um, which is really good. Uh, the transplant area itself, if we just bring this closer,
is looking okay. I think at the front here, I still have some of my natural hair rather than just the transplanted hair, whereas this area all here is all transplanted stuff. Also, um, just a quick note on, you know, uh, supplements and stuff that I take. I still haven't changed anything. I don't take any um, additional supplements or any drugs or anything like that for my recovery. So no minoxidil, no finasteride, um, no other stuff. The only thing I take is the multivitamin, which is a men's multivitamin for under 40, because I ain't hit 40 yet. And I use the same shampoo that I used like from beginning of this transplant. So I still got plenty of that shampoo left. So hopefully that will last me throughout the year of my recovery. So that is the shampoo that they gave me at the clinic. So I'm still sticking to that same shampoo and that is about it. I do still wash my hair pretty much on a daily basis, but that's because I do a lot of sports will kind of, kind of encourages me to obviously wash my hair every day. I think maybe if I didn't do enough sports, or didn't do sports every day and get all sweaty and stuff, I might be a bit lazy and not wash it every day. But on occasions when I don't wash my hair, I don't think it's that big a deal. You don't have to, I think once you're kind of at the stage of eight months, it's not that big a deal if you miss a day and you don't wash your hair. I think the whole thing with washing your hair on a daily basis is obviously just to cleanse the skin and also just to give your, your scalp a bit of a massage because that encourages the circulation and in early recovery stages, that's probably really good for your, you know, recovery of your transplant. So that, in my opinion, is one of the reasons why they want you to wash your hair on a daily basis. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Um, I hope you enjoyed looking back at, you know, what it all looked like at the beginning. And by the way, if you have not subscribed yet, please click on the subscribe button, enable bell notifications. That way you won't miss out on the next video that I post. Um, I hope you liked the content. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and like this video. Um, if not, use the comments and let me know. Uh, <laughs> by the way, if you want something, if you, if you, um, if you've got something to say, if you want to comment on something, please feel free to use the comments box. Um, I don't normally take offense to comments, so whatever you think, if you think it looks terrible, let me know, say, hey, it looks terrible. I'll probably delete your comment. <laughs> I'm kidding, kidding, kidding. Um, uh, if you think it looks good, let me know. If you think, you know, there's areas for improvement, let me know. Um, by the way, I've been getting loads of, loads of, uh, been getting loads and loads and loads of comments of people saying, are you gonna get a second transplant? Um, so just to clear it up, possibly at some point I might get a second transplant, but for now it's still early days, so I don't think, I'm not even thinking about it right now. Um, yes, in future, you know, if I have time and I have the money to, to spare, um, I might go down and get another transplant um, and just get the crown done, obviously, and do a bit, get a bit more density on, on this, um, on, on the hairline. Uh, and maybe some other bits and pieces tidied up. But that's, you know, obviously if I've got enough time and resources, and by that, I mean, it's not the money that you spend on, a lot of people think, you know, it's all about the money you spend on the, on the surgery, but actually it's not the money that you spend on surgery, it's more of the recovery time. So it's at least two weeks of downtime for me. I'm not at the stage in my life where I can recover like in two days and you know bounce back to work. It takes me a bit of time to recover from these kind of things. And it's two weeks of heavy recovery followed by you know a month or two months of you know all sorts of anxiety and all sorts of things. And it, it may be it may be a fact that you know on the second transplant it won't be like that because I already kind of used to, you know, I already know what to expect from my recovery, or maybe maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it'll be the other way around because I'll be expecting something and I won't be getting it. So, as I said, it's not a matter of, you know, um, paying for the surgery. It's a matter of, you know, time spent in recovery. And unfortunately for me, time equals money. So it's not as easy as that. But if I do have the opportunity and the resources, I will definitely go and get a second transplant and get that crown done get a bit more density and hopefully that will be sorted for, you know, 
the rest of the time. But you know, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, keep an eye on this channel. I will let you know if I'm going for a second transplant at any point. But for now, I'm still waiting to recover from the first one. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I will see you guys next week. Bye for now.